Okay, good. Thank you for coming back. Um, we hope that the break was good and that you enjoyed the, uh, the treats. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank also the uh, Persian supermarket from up in Belcommon who provided a number of those treats and have uh, a new uh, ownership up there and would absolutely recommend that you go up that way to check it out. Um, the first piece which we'll uh, move on to will be very soon. Uh, but to start with, one other thing to mention is that uh, in the hall here it's better not to have uh, food and drink. So if you do, please uh, do something about that. Um, and uh, now I would like to move on to a short piece of poetry, first by um, Khayon, who is a very famous um, Persian classic, uh, classical poet. And it goes like this. گویان کسان بهشت با اور خوش است من میگویم که آب انگور خوش است این نقد بگیر و دست از آن نسیه بدار کاواز دوحل شنیدن از دور خوش است And now we'll move on to our first uh, main event, which will be from um, Azadeh Habibullahi, uh, reciting a number of pieces from Ahmad Shamru, uh, the same that we had in the documentary, and also from Farazim Jamalat Lu, who will be playing on the piano. So please welcome them. از این مردان یکی در زهر تابستان سوزان 
نان فرزندان خود را بر سر برزن به خون نان فروش سخت دندانگیر آکشته است از این نان چند کس در خلوت یک روز بارن ریز بر راه رباخاری نشستند کسانی در سکوت کوچه از دیوار کوتاهی به روی بار جستند کسانی نیمه شب در گورهای تازه دندان طلای مردگان را می شکستند و نما هیچ کس را در شبی تاریک و توفانی نکشتند من اما را بر مرد با خاری نبستم من اما نیمه های شب زبامی بر سر بامی نجستم در اینجا چهار زندان است به هر زندان دو چندان نقب و در هر نقب چندین حجره در هر حجره چندین مرد در زنجیر در این زنجیریان هستند مردانی که مردار زنان را دوست می دارند در این زنجیریان هستند مردانی که در رویایشان هر شب زنی در وحشت مرگ از جگر برمیکشد فریاد من اما در دل کوهسار رویاهای خود جز این اکاس صد آهنگ سبور این علفهای بیابانی که می و می پوسند و می خوشکند و می با چیزی ندارم گوش مرا گر خود نبودیم بند شاید بام دادی همچون یادی دور لغزان میگذشتم از فراز خاک سرد پرد جور این است جور این است ستاره بازی هاشا 
چیزی به دهکار آفتاب نیست نگاه صدای توی من می شود چه مؤمنان نام مرا آواز می کنی و دلت کبوتر آشتیست در خون تپیده به بام تر با این همه چه بالا چه بلند پرواز میکنی و دلت کبوتر آشتیست در خون تپیده به بام تر و دلت کبوتر آشتی با این همه چه بالا چه بلند چه بالا چه بلند پرواز میکنی پرواز میکنی Um, now I'd like to move on to the next uh, piece which we have, which is from um, Miss Elnaz Ayubi. I get a shift for you, very for sure, Miss Elnaz. Thank
and Elnaz. Next, we'd like to invite uh, Ms. Daria Tawa Tawai. Hello everyone, um, my name is Connie Stamos. Um, 
I'm the president of the Campus Society of Editors, but way before that, I was a little Greek Australian girl growing up in Sydney, uh, studying English, and um, uh, I'm back after, in Australia after 30 years. So I returned to Australia in 2010. I'm so honoured to be invited here by the Persian Australian Community Association to share some uh, poetry with you tonight. Um, it's uh, very interesting to, first of all I must say it was very interesting to see the documentary with Mr. Shang Lu, which I found very moving, I'm sure you all did. Um, poets are incredible uh, creatures in my opinion and they seem to be able to express the inexpressible, what uh, it's very hard to say in very few words. And it was interesting that he did mention um, the Greeks in that documentary. Where are they and uh, where is that um, uh, culture uh, that we know from ancient times? So I'm here to introduce my poet, a man called Avierinos Andreou, who is a lawyer and who lives in Athens uh, of the present day. I had the honour of translating two of his poetry coll collections into English. The first one was published just last week as an e-book and the title is The Tiller of the Times. Uh, it can be uh, downloaded and read on a tablet, Kindle, mobile or computer, but the pocketbook version will be ready by the end of the month. Um, Avierino Santero uh, has been the president of the Hellenic Literary Society uh, in the past, uh, which was established by uh, a very famous group of uh, Greek poets, uh, including Nikos Kazantzakis, who you might know from uh, Zorba the Greek fame, and Angelos Sikelianos, and he's still on the committee. This literary society is the only one in Greece that selects the literary nominees for the Nobel Prize for Literature in, in, back home in Greece. The themes that the poetry cover are uh, injustice, uh, love of nature, the role of women throughout history, and he draws from ancient themes, uh, modern themes, and uh, also imitates the folk songs of his native village, which is called Ano Kalindini in the mountains of Arta. Um, so it was quite difficult for me to choose just one of the poems and I decided on one that has to do with a, a, a theme related to the city and I'm linking that in with an announcement that was made I think last week that there is a, I'm digressing a little bit, forgive me, uh, there's an amazing uh, collection that's arriving in Sydney if it hasn't already arrived at the Australian Museum uh, from St. Petersburg, which uh, is pertinent to both our cultures, the Greek and Persian culture, because it relates to Alexander the Great. Um, and as you know, Alexander started out in Greece and set out to conquer the world by the age of 33. The message that I'd like to, to, to put to you that Alexander gives us across the ages is that he was able to be international and multicultural before anybody else. He spread the Hellenic culture, the Greek culture and, and languages. His teacher was the philosopher Aristotle. But in doing and conquering the various lands he did, he showed a respect for the local culture and realized the value of cultivating uh, the language and the traditions of each land. And that's why I think, that's why he's, everyone still wants a piece of him until today. Um, without further ado, I'll read my translation of Avierino's poem, which is titled, City to the Children. And I chose this one because it makes me think of another city, uh, where I spent half of my life, Athens, and which is the cradle, as Mr. Shang mentioned, of European civilization, 
and which is now going through very difficult times. In this poem, at the beginning of the poem, he quotes from another philosopher who's been referred to as a dark or obscure philosopher because sometimes he was hard to understand, Heraclitus. And the message is that we older generations perhaps are worried that we fail the future generations, the younger people of uh, Greece now who are wondering what their future is going to be. So I start with a quote, city to the children. The city of Ephesus deserves to have all of its adults hanged and the city placed in the hands of the children. Heraclitus. Let's become, even now, citizens who honour and monitor our times. And let's admit it openly, we failed. We have not separated the millstones that grind the human soul, but rather we've tightened them further. We've looked on, impassive and guilty, at disorder in the world, at the gratification of evil men and mockers of goodness, and at the misery of the virtuous, and at the triumph of blind violence and its other progeny. Let's suffer what the citizens of Ephesus deserved, according to the dark philosopher. Let's at least act as Oedipus did. Let's submit ourselves to a long thorn hedge thrashing like the tyrant Aridaeus. Let's leave the city and deliver it to the children. Let's taste the deep, endless sleep of Epimenides and the old age of Hesiod and later on, we'll see how they've managed. They may trample the fences that separate the gardens. They may wrench the huge keys off the gates. 